guys, welcome back to the channel. I hope all of you are doing really, really well. And it is your Chelsea vs Brighton match review. That game went on for a long while. It took almost 104 minutes for finally the referee to blow the whistle. And it ends Chelsea 3, Brighton and Home Albion 2. A big win going to this December window. We've got Manchester United now on Wednesday. That's another must win. But if I look at the goal scores here, so Enzo got 2. Koval got one, uh, Bunneretto got one for Brian, and then Jao Pedro scored late on for, uh, of course, Brian. So this is the league situation. So Villa have dropped points. Liverpool, whew, they were three two down under, until the minute eighty seven, and they won four uh, three. Of course, you got Tottenham taking on late on. Uh, West Ham also dropping points. Brian, of course, dropping points. So. This was generally a very good week if you're a Chelsea fan. If you look at the table, West Ham drop points, Brighton drop points, United drop points, Tottenham got City, so I do sense kind of points drop coming there as well. But anyway, we win. That's a massive, massive result. Uh, did we play well? Probably no. Probably no, not at all. And of course, I want to have an, a proper discussion on some of these players because some of these guys weren't good enough. And some of these guys were brainless. Pathetic. But anyway, now before we get into all that stuff though, please do like and share the video. And if you like my channel in general, please subscribe. And the last time I line of that first four, Pochettino went to it. So Pochettino went with Sanchez, uh, who I thought the end was brilliant, to be honest. He, he got the corners, he made a couple of good saves in that situation where the pressure was high. Easily could have been a spill, so I thought Sanchez did really, really well. Uh, Dezazi at right back, Dezazi, hmm... I thought it was okay, to be honest. I don't think Dezazi did much wrong, but I thought Madsen coming on really, really helped him against Matoma. Uh, then we had Thiago Silva, Padia Chile. I thought Padia Chile was the best defender on the pitch for us. He was sublime. We'll talk about the goals later on, but that was really, really good from Padia Chile. I was happy with him. Uh, Thiago Silva as well made some good tackles. Genuinely very good. Levi Kovo. I thought Levi Kovo was actually quite decent to for left back. He was taking the ball. He was running at defenders. I thought Levi Kovo was actually decent at left back, so... Could be something that we do carry on with going forward. But I genuinely thought Kobe was actually decent at left back. Uh, then we got Caicedo, who was lucky. Very lucky not to get sent off. And genuinely not a good performance at DM in my opinion. We'll talk about that. Uh, Enzo, Enzo scored two goals. I mean, two goals that he's not going to score regularly. The one was a goal from the corner and one was a penalty. But still, Enzo getting his account open for the Premier League. Uh, then we got Sterling, who I thought was poor. Gallagher, no words. Uh, Mudrick, Mudrick's flashy moments, but in general, too quiet. And Nico Jackson, uh, too much we call, too much huff and puff, but no real end product. Uh, to be honest, I really can't judge the subs, but Breuer came on. I don't know if he even got a touch, I think he got, really, really got a touch. Uh, Palmer came on, and of course Ian Madsen came on for, of course, uh, to see, to deal with the threat of Mitoma. So the guys that actually were left on the bench, so we, don't, we didn't really have much options. So, Noni Madveke didn't come on. Uh, to be honest, I understood in the situation we were in. Dorothy Dor Pekovic was... Come on, he was not going to come on. Washington, Gilchrist, Bergstrom, and Matos. So, anyway, now we head into the game. Chelsea do beat Brighton. But was it convincing? I wouldn't say so. I wouldn't say so. It wasn't convincing. Was it better than what I expected? Probably, yeah. The result, at least. But it is a massive win. We needed to win this game anyhow, and we did. So, I thought fair play. I thought fair play. So, the game really, really started. I think it was a restart with the right intent. I think transitional football, that's what we're playing at the moment. Playing teams on the counter. And it was working. I thought Nico Jackson had a couple of opportunities. I thought Modric had a couple of opportunities. But anyway, the first goal comes from a set piece. So, it's a set piece. Badia Chile does really, really well to flick it on to Enzo. Enzo in front of the goal. Literally can't miss. He makes a 1-0. A massive, massive goal for Enzo and for Chelsea. First goal for Enzo in the Premier League. And it was a big one, in fact. And he scored one later on, which was a biggest goal of the season, in my opinion. So, yeah. Anyway, Enzo scores 1-0. Uh, after that, Koval straight away. Before that, before that goal, the pass from Badia Shule to Modric was brilliant. And that's the time of passing on the seat from my centre-back. Great pass over the top. Uh, Modric does well to win a corner. And then immediately... Uh, we score from the set piece, so good stuff there, 2-0 up, uh, we weren't playing amazing, I don't think, even at 2-0, we didn't keep the ball well enough, I think that's my issue when you're 2-0 up, you should be much more professional, you should be able to keep the ball, 
And we didn't really see that, to be honest. Uh, we did not see that uh, enough. Uh, I, I was very disappointed we didn't keep the ball well enough, which was extremely poor. Because then it became a proper transitional game and Brighton thrived compared to us. And Brighton got a goal back. Uh, Bonoerte got a goal. Uh, he gets it on his left foot. Kovu backing up, backing off. A bit scared not to get beaten. And Bonoerte just slams it in into the bottom corner. Beautiful goal from Bonoerte. Is it is a two one. And then we had then of course we head towards the madness. Conor Gallagher. Oh Gallagher, what were you thinking? Gallagher, what were you thinking? Oh. He put us in so much trouble in this game. Get sent off second yellow. And both of his tackles were absolutely pathetic. Zero common sense. Zero brain. I, I do not want to say this about people. But that was pathetic. Uh, he gets the first yellow. <sighs> Could avoid that. And then the second yellow as well. Avoidable. Gets a double yellow. Gets sent off. And I was, I was scared. I thought the game was gone at that point. I thought Brighton were going to win this game. And Brighton weren't looking amazing. Brighton, even in the second half, didn't look amazing. And this, that's probably the reason why we won this game. Because we weren't good, they weren't good, but we got the point. Because I think Brighton, with the advantage, were poor. Really, really poor. If they only really put pressure in the stoppage time period. And really, um, they put pressure in the last 15 minutes. But otherwise, I don't, I don't think they did enough, to be honest. To even deserve a draw, to be honest. Even Chelsea, I thought in transition, we were more dangerous somehow. And we did not play well at all. Uh, this was not a good performance in my opinion. Uh, we weren't keeping the ball right enough. The game management was in the bin. Our captain got sent off. What else could go wrong? What else could go wrong? I was seriously baffled. And then in the second half, Caicedo gets a yellow. And then uh, Enzo, I thought this sequence of play was absolutely pathetic. So uh, Enzo gets the ball away. Really, really casual from Enzo. Rare mistake from Enzo. Gives the ball away really quite casually. And then Kaiseido goes into a Brighton player. Which I think it is a second yellow. And I think Kaiseido should be off the pitch. He should be off the pitch. He We, we dodged an absolute bullet there. Absolute bullet. Uh, we're lucky that Kaiseido has not gone off. Otherwise we would have been back to playing Enzo in the 6. I mean to be honest. He's been forced to play kind of at 6 anyway. But yeah. Uh, Kaiseido. Oh, not good that wasn't. So yeah Kaiseido should have been sent off. A couple of minutes later. The only time we actually attacked that door really in that half. Jackson plays the ball into Palmer. Palmer plays into Jackson. Jackson. No, not, it wasn't Jackson, was it? Oh, no, it was Palmer. No, Palmer wasn't even on the pitch. Sorry, say Modric into Jackson. And then Modric runs in behind. Modric actually does the right thing for once. He runs in behind. And the penalty it is a controversial one. It is a very controversial one. I thought it was a tangle of legs. Some people think it's a penalty. I honestly don't think it's a penalty, to be honest. I think it looks like a tangle to me. And I don't think Milner was trying really to stop Modric in his path, to be honest. But I don't care. I don't care. I suffered enough, so I'll take that. And of course, Enzo, I think, scores Chelsea's most important goal of the season. I'm telling you right now, if Enzo does not score that penalty, we're losing that game. And we're still on 16 points. And then it is not looking good. <laughs> that is not looking good. But Enzo scores the penalty. It was a good penalty. I thought it was a composed penalty. Slammed it right down the middle. 3 from 1. And I thought, surely, with the way Brighton were playing, we got this. Brighton were not playing well at that point in time. It was an even game. But of course, it's a time when Tommy dropped deeper and deeper, deeper. We just wanted to see it out. And then, of course, Brighton got more possession. But uh, they couldn't quite do it. Brighton couldn't quite uh, do it. And. I thought the substitution they brought on as well, so they actually brought on quite a good players on. So Matoma came on, didn't really impact the game as I thought it would. He was trying to have a run at Dizazi, not enough. Uh, you had Gio Pedro come on, who I also thought wasn't that great, to be honest. Uh, you had Pascal Gross coming on, you had James Milner, who gave away the penalty. But I think that penalty was really, really harsh on Brighton. Uh, the officiating the standards are just absolutely on the floor, to be honest. Absolutely on the floor. Uh, if I look at these off your shading standards, they were late on. Oh my god, I was nervous. Late on, so of course, ball gets crossed in. It heads Coble in the head. And the on-field decision is a penalty. On-field decision is a penalty. And then the referee gets called over to the VAR screen. He looks at it. And then then it's like, oh, should the, it looks like he's giving a penalty. Then he doesn't. Oh, there's shouts of a corner. That's not given. It's given as a goal kick. All sorts of things kicked off. But it should have never been 10 minutes stoppage time. I don't think there was that much interruption, to be honest. To be having 
10 minutes of stoppage time. Ah, no, 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 no. V. But anyway, if I look at it from a perspective, v, did we play well? No. Did we deserve the victory? Kind of, yes, because Brighton were actually really, really bad. Uh, I, that's why I think we did deserve it, but we did not play well. We did not play well. We weren't, we're still relying on transitions. We're not keeping the ball well enough. Defensively looked better, didn't look so shaky, but still not happy with the performance in general, to be honest. Really, really not happy with the performance. Uh, now, the good thing is, so Gallagher suspended, so hopefully, uh, and Cuckoo's back, so hopefully, I want to see Gallagher dropped. He, I, I'm absolutely tired of this guy. On the ball, losing the ball. He was losing the ball. We, at times, kept the ball better when we were down to 10, when we were on 11. Gallagher, on the ball, absolutely useless. Off it. Ah, I don't have words anymore. That, that red card is, oh my god. Oh my god, it was actually baffling how he got those two yellow cards. In discipline, at its absolute finest. Absolute finest. Oh boy. It was, it was terrible to see. Anyway, let's get into the player rating. So, Robert Sanchez for me, 9 out of 10. Absolutely fantastic, Robert Sanchez. Yeah, I know he's conceded two goals, but the way he was getting out for crosses and corner kicks late on, I don't think that pitch was actually easy, to be honest. Players were slipping around, I thought, at moments. I thought Sanchez did really, really well. Uh, made some good saves. There was one from, I think it was from Chao Pedro. He gets a shot off, and it's low. And Sanchez just catches the really, really well instead of parrying it, which was so crucial as well. And in general, very, very good performance. And this is the Sanchez I want to see. There was one moment in the game though where he decided to show his bozo gene, if you know what I mean. Where he, he was too casual on the ball. Almost lost his footing. And could have been a goal. But otherwise, I thought Sanchez was brilliant. That's why I gave him a 9 out of 10. If he didn't do that bozo thing, I think it would be a 10. Uh, Desazi, I thought it was a, I thought it was an 8. I don't think Desazi did much wrong in this game. Uh, he had Edringa, who's a very wonderful, talented player. Did well against him in the first half. Then they brought on Matoma. Of course, he had support Matson, but I thought he made some very good tackles, you know, Zazi. And I was very impressed with how Zazi played. On the ball as well, looked better, he looked good. I thought he did his job. I thought he did his job. And then we've got Thiago Silva. I thought it was a 7. Looked good, looked very, very good in my opinion. Much better than his previous performances. Uh, Badi Ashile was a 9. Badi Ashile was also a 9 for me. Good stuff from Badi Ashile. In defence as well, very composed. And the the, I will. I just love that pass which he created for the second goal, which was the corner before that. So the sequence before that, where he gets the ball and just puts the ball in behind for Mudrik. Uh, but I thought Badi Shire did really, really well. Uh, I thought it was a nine. Uh, Levi Kovo, of course, scored a goal, and so that's going to give him an extra point. I thought he did all right against Bruno Menetto at times, but at, at times he was dropping too deep. He was he was too scared. I felt that's the only thing I'm going to say against Levi Kovo. Uh, I thought it was a 7, to be honest. Caicedo. Caicedo. I'm not happy with Caicedo. That was not a good performance. In the first half, on the ball, I thought it was okay. I thought on the ball, he was good. He was he was trying to trap pressure. Open the field up, which I thought we did really well at times. But off the, off the ball, he had zero positional sense. He's not a number 6. This is why I've been screaming for the last couple of months. Caicedo is not a number 6. And if this game doesn't show it, I don't know what will. Because he... He looked sketchy. He looked very, very sketchy. And he was lucky not to get sent off as well. I love Casero. I think he's a wonderful player. But he's not a number six. We need Romeo Lavia back. And, 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 and we need him back. Because Casero's six is not looking good. I thought it was a three for Casero. Uh, Enzo, of course, scored the two goals. The third goal, like I said, was very, very important. It was probably a goal that saves our season. And hopefully we can go to United, win that game, and then we move from there. But I thought Enzo was fun wasn't at his supreme best. People are gonna be like, "Oh, this is Enzo Fernandez's best game for us." I think this season Enzo has played better compared to this game. It's my opinion. I don't think uh, his two goals. Yes, of course they were good, good for his confidence. But I don't think he played like that well, to be honest. He was casual on the ball at times. I think it was, there was like two moments. So uh, there was one ball where he got the ball he underhead the pass, and then. He gave the ball away casually as well, which could have got Kaiseido sent off. So, that's just something. But come on, it, it happens with every player. He will have an off day as well. But I thought, in general, the pressure he had for the penalty did well. In general, also, he did well, to be honest. There was some lovely ball play. It just that some moments were bad. But I thought, generally, it was a, it was a 7-7 seven, seven for Enzo. I don't think it was that great. But I don't think it was that bad either. I think it's not the Enzo Fernandez I know. But it was a good performance. He got two goals. 
Uh, Sterling, two. Absolutely pathetic. This guy's on 325 grand a week. Absolutely pathetic. He is not good. He could not beat his defender on the right wing. I rarely saw him get a dribble pass to the defender there. And one was the left back. Who was playing a left back? Uh, I thought it was Balbeba at times uh, as well. It was just... Uh, I, I was disappointed, Sterling. Not good enough. Two. Uh, Conor Gallagher, minus one. If I can give this guy one. Absolutely poor. And uh, I, people have been saying player of the season for this guy. No. No, 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 no. Uh, hopefully Chukamaker's back soon. Hopefully Lavia's back soon. Because I do not want to see this guy starting game for us. He is <sighs> suspectful on the ball. Off the ball, I don't know. He's just not a number 10. He's not. He hasn't got a decent pass. He's got a right shot. He can press. Is that really a quality that Chelsea Football Club should be looking at? A guy who can press and he can shoot. That's it. He can't do anything else. Not happy with him. Not happy. And like I said many times, he's a good bench player. Keep him on the bench. But on the pitch, he was horrific. Even before the red, the two yellows, he was horrific. Absolutely horrific. Uh, I have minus one for Gallagher, of course, like I said. Uh, Mudrick, Mudrick, uh, I'm going to say four, but he was missing too often, uh, too often. There was one moment where he got the ball spun around in the first half and he got a shot off. That was a good moment. Then one moment where he got the ball, he actually ran in behind and he got a penalty for it. This is why I keep on streaming. Mudrick needs to learn how to run in behind, but I thought it was a four. I don't think it was that great for Mudrick. I think I expect more for Mudrick, to be honest, four. And Nico Jackson, Nico Jackson... Uh, the controversy all before the game, but I thought he, he was actually the best best out of this lot, to be honest. He had the, he at least got the ball, he tried to do something. Burrow, I don't think his hold-up play was that crude, he didn't help us to keep the balls. So I thought that was a negative. When we, have, when we were down to 10, I don't think Nico Jackson really did enough to keep the ball. Uh, I thought his uh, roulette, or when he gets the ball and turns around and runs at defenders, I think that's a scary sight, but... Uh, I don't think he's striker material, to be honest. Anyway, in the second goal that Brian scored was from a set piece. But, look. Is this performance good? No. Did we get the victory? Yes. Mentally, we was massive. Mentally, it was big. We showed, you know, what do you call grit. We showed fight in that second half. And that just got us the big, important three points. There's a massive fight going on here as well at the end of the game still. And fantastic stuff to see. Very, very happy with the... Uh, the result, of course, is Brighton is a decent team. They're higher than in the Premier League to be down to 10 and win the game. I'm, I'm very happy with it. But, like I said, I don't think we're using central progression enough. We're not trying to be settled in position. We're just rushing things. We're trying to play transitional football, which I don't think suits most of the squad, to be honest. It's going to be interesting interesting see how it goes the next couple of months go. Uh, for Pochettino, I'm going to give him a 6. I thought his subs were actually quite decent. Brought on Madsen at the right time. Brought on Palmer at the right time because Sterling in the second half was pathetic. He wasn't even tracking back when he was down to 10. He thinks he's a superstar. I am fed up with Raheem Sterling. I do not care. Just play anyone. I do not want to see him. I do not do not want to see Gallagher starting for the next couple of games. Uh, absolutely not good enough. So yeah, Sterling of course. So yeah, Palmer came on. So I thought that was a good top. And then Breuer came on who, actually, who, who I thought helped us keep the ball a bit better. But some things to work out before the United game. Big game who, who also looked bad. We need to learn how to keep the ball better. We need to use central progression more. We need to learn to be a possession-based team, not a transition-based team, in my opinion. Uh, of course, uh, there was late drama in the Premier League elsewhere. Aston Villa drew with Bournemouth. Uh, Liverpool winning late against Liverpool. West Ham drawing with Crystal Palace, so that's going to help us. So, West Ham now two points behind West Ham. Three behind Brighton. Five behind United. Uh, of course, Newcastle via... Uh, how many Newcastle? Seven of Newcastle, six of Spurs, and ten of Villa. So it's still a long way to go, but at least we got the result. Hopefully, we can kickstart some sort of momentum as December period is big in big month coming up in December. We got a lot of games, so hopefully, a chance to get a lot more points. But hopefully, we can get more points in less difficult manner. To be honest, hopefully. But anyway, this was your Chelsea vs Brighton match review. If you liked the video, please do like and share the video. If you like my videos in general, please subscribe, leave me your opinions in the comments, leave me your opinions about the game, everything in the comments, and I hope to see you guys later for another video.